Another mass abduction. Dozens of students kidnapped at a school in Zamfara State. Cabinets reshuffle. President Muhammad Buhari asks two ministers to go. And off the press, it's a review of today's newspapers coming up this morning. Good morning and welcome to a very, well, wet and rainy Thursday morning here in uh, Lagos. This is Plus TV Africa and, of course, uh, The Breakfast. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa. Thanks for joining us. And I am Aneta Felix saying good morning to you and thank you for making us part of your very beautiful first day, the second day in the month of September. And um, I wish this month was starting off on a very good note, but sadly, it's not. And that's because while students of Government Day School in Kaya, Maradun local government area in Zamfara State were sitting for their exams, I'm very sure their focus really was on just you know, making all A's if possible. Only to see that at 11 a.m. while in that exam hall, terrorists, you know, armed bandits basically blocked the road leading to that school, started shooting sporadically into the air to scare people, went in there, grabbed the students and made away on motorcycles. Now, sources say over 300 students, you know, go to that school. And um, people have said over 100 were kidnapped. But the official figure we've gotten from the um, police state command in Zamfara State is that 73 students are missing. Now, an ex-counselor in Zamfara State had four of his daughters who attend the school kidnapped as well. I mean, it's, it's just terrible what we've seen happen in Zamfara. Um, lots of response from people. The Arua Consultative Forum really have spoken, criticized this. And while this kidnap was happening, um, the state governor, Bella Metawale, was actually at a prayer meeting. And there at that prayer meeting, he was basically telling Zamfara State residents to take up arms and defend themselves. I have quotes for you. Now, Zamfara State Governor Metawale said, I am calling on the people of the state, particularly those in rural areas, to use all the available weapons at their disposal and protect themselves whenever the bandits attack their villages. Matalawa Ali went on to say, as from today, you should come out en masse and face the bandits if they come to your villages. He also said, do not sleep in the night. If you get any information the bandits are coming to your communities to attack you, try to ambush them with all weapons in your possession. Now, I'll quickly talk a bit about our next top trending story um, linking to this. Now, we know that when it comes to arming the uh, military, there's been lots of lapses from the federal government, lots that have even been admitted by the president himself, with millions of naira budgeted for the sale or for the purchase of arms diverted. We know that already. So if a whole military is so grossly underfunded and they have, you know, insufficient weapons to fight terrorists with all the training that they have how then does a governor plans for it to work out for citizens who have no combat training and what weapons exactly would they lay their hands on to not sleep at night get information about bandits arrival or planned attack and set an ambush for them help me explain so, this so, but, but um, that's really what's <clears throat> top trending this morning well uh before I get to the part where, you know, I'm going to obviously say that this is like clockwork and this is, you know, this happens every four AK market days. Once they release, <laughs> once they release a set, you know, they take a new set um, and it's happening all, over, all of, um, over the north, you know, and this, you know, th th there's a lot of questions, you know, you, be, for, for years now we've wondered how it's possible to kidnap 200 people. You know, and it's not kidnapping them, you know, or you know, holding them hostage in their location. This is taking them to a totally different location. So how possible is it, you know, and how easy is it that in Nigeria today you can take 100 people and just disappear? On motorcycles. On motor whatever, you know, motorcycles, on, skateboard, on skateboards, how many whatever you choose. motorcycles would you carry to so they kidnap obviously have over a lot of 73 these motorcycles. people? And if you listen to some of the demands when they kidnap, you know, motorcycles are some of the things that they, they ask for. Um, as, as ransom. Um, so it would always be mind-boggling for every Nigerian to understand how possible it is that you can take 100 people and disappear. Um, so there is that part. Um, what, what roads do they pass through? Um, you know, how do they get to their hideouts and nobody knows where they are or sees them with these 73, according to a news report, or 100? 
Um, these are things that, you know, are very, very hard to understand. But, you know, we, we should have, I think by now we should have gotten to, you know, to understand that the picture that has been painted with regard to security is very far from what the reality is um, in, in these states because of how, how easy it is to pull these things off. It basically tells you that there is almost zero security in these regions. And these bandits are really just enjoying themselves, taking charge of whatever they choose to do, doing whatever they choose. Um, there's no police, there's no NSCDC, there's some of the people who are down here in the south um, running wild. They, don't, they almost don't exist in Zamfara, in Katsina, or in, in Borno. They don't. There's, there's obviously no NSCDC or, or the Nigerian police. They keep relying on the army. Um, so there is that. Um, in response to um, Governor Matawale asking people to defend themselves, I, I also would think that we've gotten to that stage already. And it's also um, important that the people of Zamfara and people of northern Nigeria start, and unfortunately this sounds like anarchy, it sounds very much like everybody's just going to run wild and we're looking for a Bakasi boy uh, type of uh, situation here. We're looking for, um, you know, a militarization of every part of northern Nigeria. But because it's hard to believe that you can, you, you know, when people say, oh, they don't know who these bandits are, that's impossible and that's not true. If Sheikh Gumi could walk into these places and speak with these people, it means that they know who they are. They're probably members of their community or members of a, of a you know, a, a close-by community that have, are carrying out these attacks. And so I think it's also important, yes, um, it might not be lawful, as Governor Mataule is suggesting, to defend yourselves, and it's almost not, not, not impossible because these people don't have any military training, they don't mm -hmm. have any combat training either, or they have uh, cutlasses and hoes that True. they use for, for their farming. But we should get to that place where people can now say enough is enough. And I'm sorry how it sounds, but enough is enough. You cannot continue to do this. If the governor of the, or the government security agencies have all failed and don't exist, then enough is enough. And if we see a person mm -hmm. that we know has links to to these people, we would hold that press um, in the south here. So you, basically, you're saying up. that some 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 form of action on the on the side of, of the people. I'm, I'm thinking that's where we are. There has to be some action. I heard the police um, or the army. I think it was two days ago in the paper saying, "Oh, you know, uh, telling people of Plateau State to you know stay away from self defense or you know some of all of that." But I don't think those people have a choice anymore. I think if you have a thousand people in a community. 200 bandits, yes, they might be armed with AK-47s, maybe it's 50 of them, but a thousand young men in the community should be able to storm any location at this point. I, see, it, I it totally, doesn't make any I, sense I totally and it's very, understand very risky. Where you're coming and from. and the, 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 the um, people who have been kidnapped are at risk. I get all of that. But we have to get to a place where it is now, we've reached a breaking point, where we push the wall far too much. And we can no longer just sit back and hope. See, that I, the think, I think really in. it's just we sending people to the slaughter. If, if people are asked to gather themselves in mass and invade the bandit hideout. Yeah, well, that's why, that's I mean, why I mentioned it. How, it's, you, it's, you, can't take a, you can't take a knife to a gunfight because these people have yams. They would simply just fire and you know, just waste those people. So I think what we really we should focus on doing, if we had an ideal structure in place where the government works, is for people to come out and demand protection constitutionally, which is protesting. Um, that's, that should be the constitutional Anita, and, and the democratic way to go about it. That's, a, that's, that's, that's in a, an ideal society, right? Yes, you know, so it's unfortunate where we are. We're obviously not in an ideal society. And you have also seen, and this is one of the parts that maybe hurts every Nigerian the most, that if the people of Zamfara tomorrow come out and say we are protesting against the failure of government to protect us, the same government would have police clamp down ready on them. to clamp down on those protesters. Definitely. They will have readily armed police with tear gas, canisters, and whatnot, buttons, readily. You know, and you and ask, where are these men when down. the terrorists yes, came? Absolutely. And so that's one of the most painful parts of the whole uh, picture that we've painted. And once again, the truth. And the honest, true, um, honest um, picture of what exactly we're dealing with with regard security needs to be told. So it's easier for us to understand why government is failing. Is there no police command in Zamfara State? Is there no NSCDC? Is there no D, um, um, uh, DSS office? Is, aren't these things available in those mm. places? Quickly moving on to our next stop trending story. We're talking about um, also about security. So um, first of all, Falana. Um, senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, has written to President Muhammadu Buhari over soldiers jailed for mutiny. 
Now, here's the story. In 2014, these soldiers were actually have found guilty of rebelling against the authorities in their um, division in Meduguri Bono State. They were subsequently convicted. And um, their offense, according to Fallon, how he has described it, is that they only demanded to be armed against the battle, you know, with this terrorist. So the soldiers were then, you know, earlier sentenced to death. But um, that was in 2015. But Fallon was able to argue um, and push the case for you know, the death sentence to be commuted to 10 years imprisonment um, by the military authorities. Now, in this letter that Falana has written to President Muhammad Buhari, he's arguing for three things. The first thing, he mentioned that the president himself admitted in an interview to the BBC House of Service on December 28, 2015, that the government had sent the soldiers to the battlefield without arms and ammunition to prosecute the war. And that that was what led them to the mutiny and that they were arrested and detained because they were sent really to a battlefront without arms. Falano also argued that the sum of $2.1 billion and 643 billion naira that were set aside for the purchase of equipment for the counterinsurgency operations was diverted by military officers. He also said that the government and some state government had recently been granting pardon to repentant Boko Haram terrorists and had been rehabilitating hundreds of terrorists who had waged war against Nigeria and subjected citizens to abuse and human rights um, degradation. He said that if these terrorists who have committed grave offenses can be forgiven and pardoned, rehabilitated, then these soldiers who were convicted for mutiny for demanding weapons to fight terrorists should be granted pardon and rehabilitated by the federal government. Um, it's a strong argument there. So um, really, links to what I mentioned you know, earlier, sending people to the war front to fight without arms. These people have more sophistication, more sophistication regarding training. God knows how they get that. More sophistication regarding funding. And then the people you give millions of naira and billions of dollars to purchase arms, then steal that money. Nothing is done about that. And then the people who come out to complain that they are being sent to fight without arms, they're now being accused of mutiny and would be, you know, put to death or, you know, stay in jail for 10 years. It really doesn't seem like what is good is good for the goose, good, is good for the gander here. Yeah, you know, and um, I think it was a couple of years ago that I spoke with a soldier who had just returned from uh, the north, and you know, and he made similar statements. He said um, that he basically the picture over there, you know, he had lost a couple of colleagues. Uh, he showed me, a, um, you know, a few uh, wounds on his knee um, that he, you know, was able to recover from. Um, the picture that he painted basically was that you know it feels like you're fighting yourself, mm. um, according to him. Um, you know, you're, you're in battlefield and it feels like they're sending you out there to fight yourself uh, because the same people that you're going to fight, you know, have been told, according to him, well, once again, have been told, you know, that you're coming. You know, the same people that you wow. are going, yeah, you know, and so you're, every time, you know, so you're going out So you're saying the bandits have superior intelligence about well, the arrival of the According to, yeah, to him, you know, and it may when not it be, be the other it way may around. not be, it may not be, you know, um, true in every single picture, you know, but, you know, we've also heard of, you know, leaked information. We've heard of um, you know, insiders and some of all of the, those rumors uh, from President Gullah Jonathan had said that, you know, the members of Boko Haram in his government, he, I remember he said that. Um, but um, it, it, when, you, when you hear um, of things like this, you know, it, it's not really as shocking as it should be because there have been similar stories. Um, when this thing happened in 2014, I remember, you know, this story very well. They had complained that, you know, of the same things, that they weren't armed properly, and it felt like every time that they were going out, they were going out to die. And so some of the soldiers um, basically protested against their superiors, and, you know, that's how they ended up. But Femi Falona has a very, very strong point. If you can forgive the same terrorists who have committed these atrocities against the Nigerian state for the last decade, then you might as well forgive soldiers who basically haven't done anything aside protest that they needed more weapons. One thing that we've lacked... Um, in the last couple of decades also, is uh, a proper auditing with the funding for the fight against insecurity. Um, yes, I remember Sambo Dasuki had been incarcerated in 20, uh, 2015 for mismanagement of funds, so $2 billion or so. But after that, there have been billions and billions and billions of dollars of Naira that have been pumped into you know, weapons and ammunition and funding for the fight against insecurity, and yet we still aren't winning the war. So why isn't the Nigerian government asking these questions? Yesterday was in the news that $500 million was spent on 12 Tucano or Super Tucano jets. Um, 
how do we have that much money to spend on jets, but we can't buy AK-47s and buy, you know, other, you know, smaller equipment in the fight against insurgency. So um, when we become honest with ourselves and we become, um, you know, a, a state that truly wants to be honest with the fight against um, insecurity, we probably would win, you know, the war, we would be closer to winning the war. Until then, we're going to continue with this dance um, in the market and it's never going to make sense to anybody. And mm -hmm. yes, I agree with Femi Falano. If you will, um, pardon people who have murdered hundreds and thousands of Nigerians, you may as well pardon those soldiers who haven't necessarily committed any crime, aside protesting against their superiors, which, yes, in the in military um, balance is, is, is wrong. But, yeah. That's it on Top Trending this morning. Let's take a break and return to analyze the papers on Off the Press.